along my soccer universe to the last review for this weekend. Yes, I'm gonna do everything from the Northwest. Uh, you'll get next week because um, better games are happening. <laughs> but I decided I have to get a little bit of Spain in as well, just because of these guys. I mean, um, I don't deny that I've been down on Barcelona for the entire season. I've actually been down on Barcelona for quite a while. Uh, because I really didn't like how the club was going, how everything seems to be uh, seemed to be a little bit rotten, and how ridiculous some of their moves were. And yeah, um, while I always have a soft spot for Barcelona per se, um, I don't deny that being exposed to so many Barca fans, I actually wanted them to suffer a little bit uh, from time to time because I think it's a natural. If you hit the high, you go low. Then it goes the turnaround happened probably much quicker than I would have expected and maybe slightly hoped for um, but very impressive very very impressive and this Pedri guy I mean we already saw it at the Euros uh, a little bit last season but he seems to be the real deal and he's only 19 years old he is the reason that Barca becomes exciting again to watch uh, in f for my liking so even if they statistically didn't do the best, I think it's only fair that Barca is worn in this because they are the team of the season. I'll show you later on um, some other amazing uh, things in a little uh, graph that I have made. But before we get there, um, yeah, we also have to talk the other big, the, the team that's going to win La Liga. Uh, <laughs> the Catalan press is so annoyed with them that they basically say, yeah, give them just a trophy and let's get, get it over with. Um, but it's very much, I think, that for the teams from these leagues that were still the Champions League is uh, an issue. This is kind of the overarching thing. The debt is definitely foreshadowing. And it actually started in poor Portugal, where you want to give Benfica as much time to play against Liverpool, to prepare for Liverpool as possible. So they played already on Friday evening uh, against Braga in what is always a hot duel. And it was a crazy match where Benfica thought they'd taken the lead, but there was a, a handball in the build-up. Uh, then uh, Medeiros gives Braga the 1 nil lead, and in the 60th, Horta, <laughs> the Horta, Horta, <laughs> both Hortas uh, combined to make it 2 nil. I think Braga is fine. However, uh, with some nice substitutions, um, and a little bit played, uh, he get a penalty through Nunez, and then Nunez insists uh, Jean Mario, and he makes 2-2. Uh, two, two. Within three minutes, from 74 to 77, it's 2-2. Two, two. But coming right back to, to four minutes, Oliveira makes it 3-2 for Braga. And Benfica again, in the league, they cannot get anything going. However, in Europe, that's a whole dif different story. It, it, it hits home the point that the two big boys, Sporting and Porto, are out of the, uh, their respective competitions. And Benfica and Braga are still going strong. Braga, by the way, also playing against Rangers. So... Uh, it was the duel of the last uh, Portuguese team standing. Other than that, I mean, uh, Sporting Porto win, of course. Uh, they were late. Uh, Sporting 2 against Passos and Porto against Santa Clara 3 0. Um, so, yeah, uh, nothing, as I said. A port, port, the Portuguese league is very much a decided one. However, there is a slight struggle for this final Champions League spot, but not even really that. I mean, Benfica is rather safe in the third place. Uh, even the lose lose into Braga, but yeah, it is uh, it is pretty much all set in stone in Portugal. Uh, I want to gotta be honest like that. So let's leave the westernmost country uh, on the European continent and we'll go to La Liga, um, where you know. Overall, it was kind of a slow round. It really only two games really stick out, and this is of course the games of the two big boys. Now, I actually shouldn't say it because Atletico Madrid is also suddenly have, having a turnaround in form. Um, Villarreal, of course, also still in Champions League, losing 2 0 at Levante. Kind of this theme, yeah, you have to prepare for a Champions League, and Real Madrid definitely didn't go all out there. However, the one thing that is always weird is if Real Madrid goes away from home and gets three penalties, three penalties, three, and that's where I think the um, uh, Catalan media or most other Spanish media, uh, it gets very uh, annoyed at because 
unless you're in Madrid, uh, it just doesn't, there's something not right. I mean, how does Madrid win? Well, with a penalty, of course. Um, of course, there was an offside goal also disallowed for Celta Vigo. So, you know, all it kind of all plays together in many, many ways. Um, the, I, 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 they, gave them, they gave them three penalties so that Benzema can score a hat trick, however, he misses. The second one, the last one was probably the most contentious one. So it was one at the half, then Nolito could equalize, then Benzema misses one pen penalty and then gets the other one. Where I think, uh, when you, I think I can see why, why, why it was given, but uh, yeah, the movement is coming from Mendes. But so be it, I don't want to go into the, all the polemics. Uh, what we do have to talk about is that Atletico Madrid is slowly picking up quite some steam, and uh, especially Joao Felix out of nowhere is becoming a great one and he actually um, scores even a header. So make, makes it 1-0. Yes, it's 1-1 one, one, uh, through Escalante, but then uh, Luis Suarez by Joao Felice and again Luis Suarez. I mean, Suarez comes on and the game turns around, although uh, when he comes on it goes 1-1. One, one. But you know, uh, Atletico Madrid finding finally the form as well. It will not be enough for a title push, but as a remarkable result nonetheless. Bate is also getting a little bit back on track. I mean, the other thing, uh, and I have not mentioned it, but the other major, major, major factor uh, in the whole, in this all is that uh, we had an international break. So there's always some shaky performances as well. But, you know, Betis were shaky before. Now maybe they could uh, recover and so on. I don't think Betis have too many national team players. So that's always good. 4-1 over uh, Osasuna's side. I think there was, a, there, there was a great goal in there, I heard. I saw a little bit of Granada against uh, Rayo, where Rayo had a 2-0 lead and then Granada storms uh, back to 2-2. Never watch Valencia. Uh, it's staggering how little goals are, are, are scored as, as of late when you're watching Valencia. It's always one or zero or whatever. Um, but the big one was, of course, Barcelona, Sevilla. Uh, a Barcelona team that, remember the last time we saw them, they just uh, demolished, absolutely demolished Real Madrid. Uh, Barcelona team flying high um, and... I think Sevilla was a stiff test for them uh, in the sense that uh, Sevilla... Uh, and like a better version of Valencia is a team that really uh, can annoy everything out of you and suck the life out, out of you. I actually think Sevilla would have so many great players, but the way they are they're playing, it is rather obvious. It, it, it's a tedious watch, uh, this Sevilla team. And they actually kept Barcelona largely at bay, had a few minor chances them, themselves. But Barcelona didn't create all too many chances themselves. However, what then Pedri did uh, to score the winner, um, it will probably not be the goal of the season. But the way uh, he scores the goal in the 72nd, outstanding. The way he, I think he he, he flies by, uh, goes past Rakitic, uh, and then another dummy where uh, most players would have shot at that point or already. But he basically, he again um, hesitates just enough. So let the other defender fly, fly by, and then he unleashes a shot right in, 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 into the corner. Really, really hard to take shot as well. Uh, later on, Ter Stegen almost would have uh, gifted Sevilla an equalizer, but he made up on his own mistake. But yeah, this Barcelona team is flying at the moment. And actually, let me show you a um, graphic. This is how, I mean, it's actually, actually two graphs. In, in one you see on the left side the, how the expected points have been developing over the season. Of course, the white one up top is Real Madrid. But you see Barcelona was initially right, right, right there with Real Madrid. It had a horrible phase where they get down. And suddenly, somewhere around the end of February, February early, uh, yeah, beginning of February, suddenly it increases again. But it gets, gets even more. Uh, it, it gets even better in, 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 in terms of ratings. You see the slow slump that Barcelona had, and then suddenly it kicked, uh, it kicked up. It was the game against Atletico. The next jump, the big win over Real Madrid. And now with this win, they are suddenly the best team in Spain, mathematically. Uh, as many other uh, curves in there as, as well. It's kind of cal calico, don't worry about it. But this rise by Barcelona to be being back at their best. And yes, this was uh, partly due to Real Madrid being absolutely hammered by them. But that's a rather, rather, rather remarkable turn to, to turn around. Um, yes, and even Rasos that then also beat Espanyol. And uh, speaking of this remarkable turnaround, um, 
it is not enough to get into a title contention, although there's still 3% chance, but uh, I just don't see it. Yes, give Barcelona the three points against Riot, 69 points back. I just don't see it happening, honestly. Uh, I think no one realistically sees it. So the title will go to Madrid, but Barcelona actually really, really, really putting the stamp on the season and, and finding another gear. The question is, of course, can it be sustained? Um, but it is rather remarkable what was happening there and uh, tip of the head to Xavi, uh, my fellow Mandalorian uh, fan. Pretty amazing job that he has, has done in such a short period of time. It has to be seen. It's not quite there where we know Barcelona can be, but it's already really, really good, especially what you saw in the fall. Um, it is now Sevilla will probably end up before it. I mean, uh, it's the same boring old table. It will Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid. Uh, permutation of that will end up on top. The Sevilla is best of the rest, and then there's Betis uh, and the Real Sociedad and Via Real teams that are just not quite good enough to challenge maybe for the championship, uh, the Champions League. Maybe if they win a Europa League, it could happen, and so on uh, and so forth. On the bottom, it's also still. Exciting. Levante not in last place anymore, but it's a steep climb. I mean, uh, they are also six points back. Uh, Mallorca in trouble. Cadiz uh, might get really dragged into it, as will Granada potentially. And I don't think the way that Rayo has been trending that they are all that safe themselves. Uh, Looking at the next round of matches, I I don't think there's a real standout time in Levante Barcelona. This, this was always one where they, where Barca could trip up, but at the moment the way Leand Levante are doing and the way Barca are doing, I don't see the Real Madrid get tough. Now, uh, maybe the best one might as well be Villarreal against Athletic Club, if you ask me. So yeah. That were my thoughts from the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, please drop a line below. And tell me what you thought about the hair peppering stack. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like these. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.